Hello YouTube friends, today we're going to make a craft. I call these peg doll bunnies and they are a perfect project for you to do at Easter with some family members, perhaps some children or grandchildren, niece, nephew, friends. They, I make a little crocheted cap with the ears and I paint the body in acrylic paint and they also come with a little carrying case. I'm going to show you how I do all of this and this will be in three different parts. The part today, I'm going to show you how I paint the body. So this is called a peg doll or sometimes called a wooden people. And this is the little baggie that they fit in. It just fits inside here and ties up. So this is a carrying case. Maybe you're, tra you're traveling with children and they can take this on the plane. So when they're bored in the airport, they have a little toy to play with. And I always tell people, although these are super cute, you know, it's not your $50 stuffy. So if your child accidentally leaves it somewhere, it's not the end of the world. You really shouldn't be traveling with their American doll, American girl doll or something, you know, these expensive toys. So here's its little carrying case in the bottom, ties up in a bow. There you go, ready to go with your little toy for the season. And you can make this together with your child or a little per little friend you might have in your life, niece, nephew, grandchild, um, big brother, big brother, <laughs> uh, big sister program person, a little we call them. Here's the crocheted hat and bag. And the peg doll is the lady style. You can buy these at Michael's. I get mine from Stock Aid Art Supplies. I'll have the link below in the description box. So these are the supplies I use to paint. I always have paper on hand. I have my jar for water. I make sure I'm using something that doesn't look like a glass. It's a jar. You don't want to drink your paint water. I use gallery acrylic white. This is titanium white. I have a cadmium yellow. System 3, but you can use any brand you have. I have Winsor Newton Galleria cadmium orange. We're going to make an orange bunny today. This is my favorite black. It's multi-craft. It's just an inexpensive black, but I found the consistency of it to be absolutely perfect for my fine lines that I do. So I, I'm sticking with that black for now. I have Galleria Acrylic Windsor Violet and Ultramarine Blue. Those two colors mixed with white make very, very pretty colors. I have a Liquitex Medium, which will thin the paints without using water. And I have a high gloss Liquitex Varnish. That is the final touch after painting the doll. So this is a wooden person, the lady style, the peg doll, and the paint brushes I use. I have a zero liner brush. I like using these very, very fine liner brushes. I also have a square a flat brush. This is one size one flat brush. Now to know if these are good, just wet the top and you see if you can get a very, very fine tip there, that's going to give you nice flat lines. I like those brushes. And this is a filbert brush. And this is good for applying large amounts of paint, like over a large area. So the orange of the body and the varnish will be done with that brush. My person is almost three and a half inches here from bottom to top. And then when we put on those bunny ears, it's going to be about four inches. So I'm just going to prep my palette, put in some white paint. And then I'm also going to put in my orange, my blue, my purple, and my yellow, and the thinning medium. The first decision I make is what side of the peg doll's head will be the face. 
I like to just choose the one that has the least flaws in the wood, but you may prefer the flaws in the wood, doesn't matter. Um, so I've decided here that this one side is going to be the face, and that's what it's going to look like with the hat on. So that gives you an idea of where to put the eyes and the nose and its bunny smile. So first step is giving it its orange dress. So I'm just going to paint orange. I'm going to mix a little bit. I'm going to put in my thinning medium here. I'm going to put in a bit of white and yellow to make it more opaque. And I took about three layers of paint to get the orange I wanted on the bunny's dress. So I just used my Filbert brush here and brushed it around, leaving space at the top and the bottom for the collar and the hem of the bunny's dress. And I keep my brush clean quite often. I, I clean it and dry it. It's just something I do very often. That's how I, that's my style of painting, how I like to work. So here is my bunny with about four coats of orange paint and I'm going to put in the buttons down here just along the front. I'm going to put the buttons in using the style of uh, folk art style of dots using the bottom of my paintbrush here. So you can make dots either with the tip of your brush or the bottom of your brush. I'm going to use the bottom of the brush here just to show you that alternative way of making a dot because my buttons are just dots. I always just try a few out there on the easel to see if you get the consistency correct. The paint has to be not too thin and not too thick to get just the perfect dot. So that's what I'm doing here, trying it out to see the thickness of my paint. And I'm going to try it with the bottom of the brush and then we'll make some buttons. Next step is the collar, and the collar has two colors in it, white and black. So I'm just using the same paint I had mixed up there for the buttons, and I'm going to paint in the white part of the collar, and then I'm also going to paint in a white line at the hem. Now the collar doesn't need to have too much of a steady hand. My hem at the bottom does. So there's my collar work. Um, I find the bottom, it takes a lot of practice to get a straight line on a round object. So I've just, I've been doing this for years. So I have got lots of practice. If you're not interested in doing straight lines, you could do more creative designs than I'm doing. You could have just a dress with flowers or plaid or just stripes up and down. You don't need to do the same design I'm doing if it doesn't work for you.
the bottom of my dress here gets one straight line of white. And this cleans up my work from earlier, which I didn't pay too much attention to getting a straight edge here with the orange, because I knew I would be coming in here with the white to give it a straight line. You need the nice consistency of paint to be able to do this. You see, I just turn it all and do my best to go back and forth with this zero, number zero liner brush, getting the straightest line I can. And this does take practice. Next, I'm going to do the exact same thing with blue, yellow, and purple. Just using a thinned paint thinned with my medium, not with water. Water makes it, for me, too watery. So I use the medium. I'm just going to paint a straight line with blue, a straight line with yellow, and a straight line with purple. Now I'm painting on my face. So instead of doing dots with the end of the paintbrush, I'm doing dots with the paint bristles themselves to get two little eyes. And then I'm gonna just brush in the nose and the mouth. The last thing I paint is black on the collar. I just come in under the white and do one thin line of black to give it a bit more of a pop. It's just a black line between the main color of the body and the white collar. Just has nice contrast there and cleans everything up between those two colors. a little tip and trick here I didn't like the face of my bunny so if you don't like something you can just take sandpaper and sand it off and give it another try so I've sanded off my bunny's face I'm painting on a new bunny face and here it is I like it much better that's a thumbs up My final step is the varnish. So I'm quite generous with this varnish because this brand I find 
works well with a very generous application and it makes the wood grain just look beautiful and gives everything a nice shine. It also has a, another purpose, which is after you've applied this varnish, you can just wash your doll off with soap and water. So if you give this to a child who gets their chocolate milkshake all over it or ketchup, soap and water will just clean it off because it has this protective layer of this varnish. And it looks so nice when it's done. We have one last thing to do, which is to glue the little hat onto the doll. So I'm gonna start with the front of the doll. I just make sure before I get put the glue on that I have it lined up where I want it. One side always seems to look a bit better than another, so I choose that to be at the front. So I have it lined up where I want it to go. Then I put the glue on and quickly put it back in place. So a bit of glue here across the front. This is a hot glue gun, so adults only using this. Put it on there. This can burn quite, these can give quite bad burns. So I don't allow anyone younger than 15 to touch these. Now I put it along the back and I just press my bunny's cap onto the head there so it fits nicely. I will have two more videos following this. The first one, I'm going to show you how to make this cap. Now, if you don't crochet, it is a little bit difficult to do. It's an intermediate project, not beginners. So you might want to get someone who does crochet to help you or to make it for you. Or alternatively, you could make your own or paint the ears on just with paint. Felt is another idea. And the other video is going to be showing you how to make the bag, carrier bag here, that the doll comes with. So the doll fits into the bag so you can take it with you. So that will be a third video. This is going to be uploaded on a Monday, the video showing how to paint the doll. And the cap will be uploaded the next day on the Tuesday and then the bag on the Wednesday. So. If you're watching this in the archives, you'll find them all together in my playlist for making crafts. If you're watching this following my channel, you will see them coming tomorrow in the next day. So I hope that you enjoyed learning how I paint my doll today and take care of yourself and those around you. See you in the next video.